So we went over on a, uh, in those days, it was very exciting. It was a US, I, I, from memory, I think it was some sort of National Guard, uh, uh, huge aircraft, was, I think it was a Galaxy, a C5 Galaxy, one of these enormous cargo aircraft. And so we filed up into this thing that had this enormous cavern inside it. It was being filled with military equipment and then we filed up into a sort of passenger area right up in the top of the plane. I'd never sort of been on one of these planes before. They were quite, um, you know, we'd sort of seen them and sort of marvelled at them in books and things. But So that was all very exciting. And then we stopped in Diego Garcia on the way and that was, of course, you know, fascinating, but there was nothing there. We got out and roamed around, got back on the plane and then sort of headed on. But then when we landed in Rwanda, it was night time. Uh, it was, uh, you know, an airfield where there was visible signs of mortar bombs having gone off on the tarmac and the like. There was activity going on. Uh, we came off the plane. The gear was being marshaled off the plane. I remember there were, I think, uh, you know, cameras and lights sort of looking at us as we came off the plane. Um, so it was all a bit sort of a mix of excitement and disorientation. And then we were moved very quickly to an area where we got ammunition issued and all of that. So. That got us very focused very quickly, and then we were we moved into the airport terminal. And in the airport terminal, there was, uh, and we had to be held there for some hours. And I, I think it was we were being held perhaps to be moved on to the to the area where we were going to be encamped, the, the former army barracks and the former. Uh, well, in fact, no, we were going to the former hospital at the stage. We were going straight into the hospital, um, but we then explored the airport for a couple of hours that night and it was a scene of already of devastation and looting and ransacking and there was you know pictures of the former leader that had been defaced and there were safes that had been broken open it was it was complete sort of chaos and again all very uh, exciting at the time um, we didn't encounter any uh, you know anything particularly grisly and gruesome at that stage but you know that was what the anticipation was. Uh, so we explored for a couple of hours and then uh, in the morning we were moved on to the the hospital and I can remember, you know, driving and we were put onto this dilapidated old beaten up bus uh, and we drove through the city and again the city, the streets had been uh, largely cleaned up of human remains and those sorts of things but it was, there weren't a lot of people around and it was it was, you know, it was very, very hot. We'd watched the sort of spectacular sunrise from the airport. Um, yeah, hot. Few people, signs of sort of carnage, uh, rolling through these streets over these hills. It's a very spectacular sort of town, Kigali. And then we got to the to the hospital. And then once we were into the hospital, we, we found our rooms. But once we were in the hospital, then straight away we were starting to encounter all sorts of uh, you know horrendous things that had been left as a result of the of the massacre so of the the sort of the, the the way the genocide had sort of rolled out through the city so we um, we came into a hospital it was it was like um, I think it was the Mary Celeste the ship that they found that tables were still set it was like this there were desks with paperwork where you could see they were halfway through a sentence and had dropped the pen or, uh, um, you know, people had clearly been in the course of their business and had to leave very quickly. Um, and then as we started to explore the, the hospital, we, you know, we started to come across, um, you know, clearly uh, places where people had been sort of corralled and then massacred. There were rooms where bloodied handprints all over the walls and there were, you know, beds where people had obviously been sort of uh, uh, taken to in their beds. Um, the patients, it seemed, uh, even though the, the bodies were gone, the, the blood and gore was still around, but the toilet bowls, clearly the patients had been left to their own devices, devices for a very long time because all of the toilet bowls in the hospital were filled to the top and had set hard with refuse, so there was no plumbing. Uh, and as we, over the weeks ahead, started to, to clean up the hospital to get it ready for our medicos to come and set it up and run it as a hospital, uh, there was you know gruesome tasks like having to you know literally chip through all of the solid human 
faeces and stuff, um, trying to you know somehow avoid the smell of that with gas masks, which was pointless, but you know it was a bit of a psychological effect along the way. And so we were getting that, and then progressively the plumbers were one by one getting toilets operating so that we could actually sort of use them. But we were living in amongst this for for days, and I think we were getting concoctions of methylated spirits and uh, iodine that we were just scrubbing everything with to try and get this place back to a operating hospital and that sort of stuff. So the, the first days and weeks were very, um, very confronting, very, um, uh, you know, disturbing as well. There were, there were a whole range of things that happened in those early days.